big thing of water. Yep. <sighs> Is this the cocaine we got from the Bollywood people? My friend, why would you say such a thing? Why would you make such an assumption? That's what people... And in fact, blue, you know, kind of like Walter White. But yeah, in case you didn't know, uh, these are BCAAs. Bakchan's Crazy Ass Addictives. Straight out of Bollywood, liquefied and then powdered and then put back into your liquid. The color of blue, just like the meth made by Walter White, straight from Bollywood to us. We're getting paid $500,000 to endorse this product. And we do paid reviews for it. Bakchan. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to our stupid Rick Shoots. I'm Corbin. <laughs> you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for GC content. And speaking anybody of... anybody wondering, it's, those are branch chain amino acids I put in my water when I go to work out and I'm doing it later. I thought it'd be funny to call them Bok Chan's Crazy Ass Addictives. And speaking of people who pay us to do paid reviews, Karen Johar. Oh, man. That's why we love that's, Kuchko Tata High. That's why we drive do... Mercedes-Benz convertibles. But uh, this is an interview he did with Film Companion not too long before his 50th birthday. Uh, and it's an interview with them and he goes over his learning his future um what he, about the future of his career about like insights of like cool. bollywood good and stuff like that so you a lot of people have sent this to me because he goes into depth of like watch for remember during the the trial uh, with johnny and amber everybody was watching for all of the signals where she was doing coke because mm -hmm. she was when she had the thing up and then she licked her lips and then she watch it's bollywood guys i promise you Bok Chan's crazy ass addictives are going to be in this segment. I'm just, I'm just, it's called, I'm stretching out that skit long thing here. There's no, there's no cocaine anywhere in the world. It's all a hoax. Shut up. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Taken seriously as a filmmaker. And that's really the truth of it. I can, I can defend myself. I can argue it. I can speak from my heart about what I feel about my work, but the truth is I'm not taken seriously by a certain section, and now I've learned to live with it. Salman and mm -hmm. Shahrukh were dancing to Bhangra Pale, and like Kajal and Rani were dancing to Koi Mil Gaya, and Kuch Kuch Hota. Like every movie star that hit the dance floor, there was a song for that. It was my 50th birthday, and for the 50th time, I'm in conversation with Anupama Chopra on Film Companion. Please subscribe, share, do whatever you can. Karan, it's always Hey, look at the background. On Film Companion. I, it's great to be here. I figured 50 years is a good time to take stock. Mm. Anna? It is. I think it is. I mean, I'd have is to it, Rick? I turned 40. Yeah, it's an awesome time. You know, I took some stock then as well. And Consider it to be like halftime. Older and hopefully wiser. And like everything else you do, Karan, turning 50 also created headlines with, <laughs> with a party out of the Great Gatsby. Yeah. Uh, chandeliers <laughs> and red carpet and bling. And then, of course, all the... Looks a lot like my 50th. Super spreader event. Yes. Tell me, Karan, was it, was it simply that you wanted to turn 50 with the most flamboyant... Party that you could. Uh, I mean, what was it? So it so happened, Anu. It was not how it was meant to be, actually. Um, when I, it was a lot of my, because I think that when I turned fifty, it was a very big deal in my own head, uh, and I had like really created like a big deal about it in my head for many years. Uh, complete self-importance, nothing beyond that. It's just me feeling great that I am turning fifty, and how I feel like everyone must take notice of the fact that I'm fifty. <laughs> Uh, uh, traumatized about the fact also part of me is and part of me wants to also celebrate it and because I've been in the industry now 27, 28 years I just felt like I really want to do something special so the idea was like I should do something you know somewhere we did else, not get an invitation destination very upset was working on schedules were going crazy not I that we could have gone in the middle of it all for my but I would like to have been invited um, and then it was you, like you give us drugs chat with me and he was like 
Why aren't you doing this at once? You know, it's in those cups. You think it all really began for you here. This is like, in many ways, home and it's... Which it's is where we're sitting now. Where we're sitting right now at yeah. the Ashraj Films. And it just felt like... And when he gave me that 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 feeling that that, that is where I should do it, I was like, it all fell into place. Yeah. I was like, my 50th has to be at Yashraj Films. Because my anything I know about this movie industry, about the movies, the passion for movies, everything I've learned from this studio, from Yashankal and from Adi. And, and literally, I felt like there was no better place for me to celebrate my 50th. So then, of course, my production designer, Amrita, Apurva, the CEO of my company, Marika, who's like, who, you know, is one of our producers at Dharma. Everyone just became like part of the, the crew that took care of it. Like they just took care. They said the interiors has to be a set. And of course, it has to be over the top, dramatic, theatrical, all the above. Everything that I'm all about. Yeah. yeah and unapologetically. So I was so excited, Anu, about my own party. I kept <laughs> so I in a candy store. I was like, I'm so excited that I'm having this bash. And I said, it has to be bling because, I mean, chandelier chic has to be the theme. Of there course. has to be chandeliers on the party, on the dance floor, as well as on the ceiling. Like everywhere. There has to be chandeliers everywhere. So people were looking like chandeliers. There were chandeliers and I was loving it all. And I had <laughs> such a good time at my own party. Like I was just having fun meeting people and I'd called all the people I worked with and, and love and have, have like just like feelings of like you've been in some like I'm not even seen through the last two and a half years yeah. but you have that relationship with them it was really like and I and I said like mom you're not invited <laughs> <laughs> you're not invited first of all I'm 50 and I live with mommy uh, which in itself is, is well not unusual it's lovely and I love it I, I wouldn't imagine my life without it but I was like mom you're not invited <laughs> because I was like no maybe I should draw some age <laughs> Which not to sound not ages, to I'm 50 myself, so I can't. But I was like, I have, to, I have to draw a line somewhere. So that was the line I drew. Um, so it was great fun. Everyone was there. And of course, there were the stories and media articles that said that it became a super spread. Now, look, not to get um, technical about it, but we don't know who contracted it when because there was a lot happening that week, even in the movie. Industry. Oh, did it become and a super spreader event? Wedding, I think so. Oh, God. <laughs> Oops, I mean, it's not good. Like, <laughs> down to me. Like, I don't mean to sound like a victim, but I do feel <laughs> marginally victim. <laughs> I'm like, I have nothing to do with this pandemic. I just want to put it out there. It's not me. Nothing. I have no connection with the beginning. You were in the lab in Wuhan. We know it. <laughs> <laughs> Why people wrote what they did? How many people contracted it? Did it happen at my party? I'm not saying it. I don't know. So on IMDb, you have 10 credits as a director. Right. Okay, and that includes the three shorts you did for the anthologies, Bombay yeah. Talkies, Ghost Stories, Last no, Stories, no. plus Rocky or Rani Ki Prankani, which is the film you're directing now. So you're a very prolific producer, but as a director, you've taken a long time to incubate, to create. But that's changing now. You have said that you want to make seven more movies yeah. before oh. 60. You have already announced your Good. next an action yes. film that goes on the floors right after Rocky Arani releases. Being stressed while you're saying it, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm breathing heavily. Like, but but, but then, what, what, what is changing? Is it just a keener sense of mortality? I think, uh, yes. I think um, I decided when I turned 50 that what is this decade what is something that I have to kind of make sure? And I said, what I have to make sure is I have to make many movies. I have to direct many movies. Good, bad, I'm ugly. Glad he's going to be directing. Whatever the outcome is, that who knows? But my endeavor will be to direct many more movies this decade so that when I turn 60 and I have another celebration with the same chandeliers, and <laughs> I will still feel like I've left behind at least five to seven films in that decade, which I can't say right now. If, if I go in my 40s, um, I have directed two movies. Wow. And that's really... That's not enough. That's not enough. Yeah. Uh, not to say that the world is waiting for me or that I, I feel like I'm a filmmaker that people are waiting, you know, with bated breath for what I'm doing. Actually? I'm not any of that. But I need to do it for myself, right? Because I feel like it's it's like, I think... What was, that happens was his last one? Um, that I one of the shorts? Film set. I think so. And when I see the execution of a certain vision happen in front of my eyes, that feeling I'm not getting from any other thing that I do. And I realized that the most on the sets of Rocky or Rani Ki Prem Kahani because I'm, 
it's like another feeling of elation. that's the one with uh Ranbir and, and Ali. Mm -hmm. well, like I, I'm shooting a song right now Ranbir not Ranbir like yeah fifth time I've done a song where there are many performing artists and dancers and there's a big set and the, you know it's just like what you call the quintessential big Bollywood item song I love every minute of it like every time I take a shot every time like Ranbir Singh turns in 48 frames to camera I'm like lovely blow that fan all look zingy and like zany and like everything everything that I grew up and loved and I'm, I don't feel like that part of the cinema that we create has aged at all yeah. we do it much lesser now because there's so much more um, so much more focus on trying to kind of you know be catering to a certain sensibility as well this film I'm not saying that I'm not catering to that sensibility but I'm also having a lot of fun and that joy is what I want to repeat in this decade so, speaking of big blowout songs, Karan, there's a very uh, clear through line in terms of aesthetic yeah. from Kuch Kuch Hoffai 1998 to Jug Jug Jiyo, your yeah. latest production, right? You are a lover of the big, yeah. the big thing, right? Yeah. So the big stars, the songs, the beautiful locations. I mean, <laughs> I remember you said to me once, and I think you were only half kidding, that even your cameraman has to be good looking. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I still wake up in the morning. It surprised me. The person you meet on set should be like lovely to look at. That's awesome. <laughs> I mean, I, aesthetic is the word we use because you know my woke meter keeps going so high when I'm giving any interview now because I'm like, okay, that parlance has to be altered and that terminology cannot be used anymore. So now I'm not saying. Let's not say good looks. Let's just let's call it a thing of beauty. Let's say sexy. <laughs> They've got to be sexy. In the eyes of the beholder. So Indeed. What's available to me, uh, but. Um, uh, there's enough beauty around there, so, so here's my question, right? Whenever, of course, the other great connoisseur of beauty in Hindi cinema is Sanjay Leela yes. Pansari, right? Yeah. Uh, and whenever I've talked to him about this, he's always sort of traced it back to a childhood of deprivation. He always hmm. says that because there weren't colors, there wasn't the hmm. and that just outsized kind of staggering loveliness. He wants to constantly create it now. Uh, is there a backstory for your kind of backstory? She always asks such good thinking? questions. You know, mm -hmm. I know I would love to intellectualize this answer and give you something that would track back to my childhood and maybe subconsciously it can be. Yeah. I just love Hindi cinema. I grew up loving Hindi cinema. When VHS was introduced when I was nine or 10 years old and I could watch the movies where I had heard all the songs growing up with my mom. She was a big listener of all the Guru Dutt songs, Mohammad Rafi, Kishore Kumar, Lata Ji, Asha Ji. You know, S.T. Barman, R.D. Barman, like I used to... I love that we know songs. these names now. So when VHS came, I wanted to put visuals uh, to the songs. I know some of those names. Yep. I then wanted to see Piyasa. Right. I wanted to see Kagas Ke Pool. I wanted to see those movies because I'd heard all... I wanted to see how did they perform Bhakt Ne Kiya, Kya Hasi Sitam. So I just grew up loving cinema, Hindi cinema at that time. Because mm -hmm. it was just the only cinema I was exposed to. And while everyone in my... in I grew up in... Um, a very affluent neighborhood called Malabar Hill where no when it wasn't cool to watch Hindi yeah. films, talk about it, go to the cinema and watch it. But I didn't care because I was like, I love this cinema. I love it. I used to dance in my bedroom to Bollywood songs. I was obsessed with Rishi Kapoor. I wanted his sweaters that he wore in the movie. <laughs> I was performing to all the dance steps alone in my room in front of my mirror. And I did it unabashedly and unapologetically. All I loved was Hindi cinema. When I used to go and watch a film, Anu, and the censor certificate came out, and if it was a 15 reel film, I would feel sad. My heart would sink. Mm. If it was 23 reels, in the censor certificate, you could read the reels yeah. in those days. Yeah, yeah. I would be like, yay, it's 23 reels, it's longer. There was no such thing as a film I did not love. Mm. There was no such thing as a film I did not enjoy. Mm. The longer the film, the better. There mm. were trial shows which we now know as previews. Correct. I used to wait from the morning off that day. To That's why all of his films are over three hours. <laughs> watch that film and just, just sink into my and just get into that world. It didn't matter who was in the movie, who made the movie, how good or bad it may have been in retrospect. I loved it. That's the feeling really that, that I have always brought to the cinema I've created. I love everything about the <coughs> tropes of Bollywood that we know them as, <coughs> the 
songs, the movie stars, the glamour, the glitter, the, the energy of those song and dance sequences. Of course, one has tried to evolve that with time and mm. give it some plausibility and sensibility, which is really tough because uh, some of it just comes from a place of abandon. Yeah. There's no logic to why Ranveer Singh is dancing. At the <laughs> right now. There's no logic why I'm shooting a song in Vienna where Alia is going to be wearing beautiful jackets and Ranveer is going to be singing behind her and she's going to pretend she didn't see him. You know, so it is no logic to any of this. And I don't want to give you the logic. I want to show you my abandon. I'm so excited yeah. for his next I film. I understand where Sanjay comes from when he says this. I'm not quite sure what I can track back to, but I can definitely track it back to my memories of just loving Hindi cinema when I was 8, 9, 10 and then beyond. But, you know, that's the other thing about, about coming back to your party because it was so amazing that all these people in these stunning gowns on this red carpet to rival can, mm -hmm. right? But it, eventually, you're all dancing to Duffley Rani. Of course. <laughs> I, I mean, it. it is what I, I, I like, do you know what my kids present to me was? <laughs> They're five and a half and they know how obsessed I am to Duffley Wale. So Duffley Wale goes back to me and my childhood. Mm -hmm. When I watched Sargam in a preview theater, I became obsessed with that film. And as a child, I don't think my father even realized uh, that he kept asking me to dance with Duffley Valley, but I wasn't doing the Rishi Kapoor step. I was doing the Jaya Pradha step. Right. And he was <clears throat> he was fine with it. Hmm. He was fine that his son was performing to those dance steps every day in his living room. And he would make me do it in front of his friends. And I would do it with great fun. And everyone sang along and danced along. And they hmm. celebrated my excitement for that. Yeah. That song That's wonderful. is a big part of my childhood. I That's wonderful. I'm obsessed with that song. Be supportive of your children. And Jaya Prada came on set and we did Duffy Valley together and I hugged her tight and I said, you have no idea what this moment means to me. You have no idea. It was Jaya Prada in Duffy Valley, then it was Sri Devi in Karte Nahi Karte. And I, the, I performed this Anu on my own. I loved, so when my children uh, wanted to give me a present, I don't know who suggested it to them. They actually rehearsed on the steps of Duffy Valley Aww. and they made me sit down and I had tears coming down from my eyes because I had my two children who had made such an effort. They had a dance teacher who had taught them this and they had performed to Duffley Valley. Of course, with steps they had completely forgotten. And <laughs> the <laughs> the <laughs> so it's so I mean, <laughs> even at this song, so let me tell you about, about the DJ element at my party. Yeah. Handled completely. You tell Kieran Johar doesn't like to talk. Not at all. Yeah, he's just. <laughs> Ranveer Singh was in charge of the music. He was like, the movie star comes on the dance floor and we play their song. You have to be. So he and DJ Ganesh were like at it. They literally, he did a tech check, Anu. He did a tech check. The party was like way down at like 10, 11 at night, people were coming. He was there at 4 p.m. at Yashraj doing a tech check for sound. He had gone and rehearsed the Duffy Wale item. He had made them make those. <laughs> the, the, the this is not surprising in the not slightest. At all. Because he wanted it. And he had mm. it and, and it was a big surprise for me. I had no idea any of this was happening. They created a mix. Right. They played it. And it was a, he was in charge of the music. He was like, this has to be like the Om Shanti Om dance. Floor. <laughs> like, scene, like movie stars on the dance floor and play their songs. Like, so it was like literally Salman and Shahrukh were dancing to Bhangra Pale. And like Kajal and Rani were dancing to Koi Mil Gaya. And kuch kuch hota. I like, want to see video of that. Yeah, yeah. There was a song for them. And he was ready. He was only on the cons DJ console. I bet they had to That's check in their phones. Music. I have to be very, very immensely grateful for him. Actually, he controlled. So the music came straight from him. And he's like... Yeah, we are not playing any of this house and lounge and cool and techno <laughs> and rock and we are playing Bollywood. Because that's, what, because that's what I am. I unapologetically love it. How can I have any other music at my party? But okay, tell me this, Karan, and tell me honestly, when something like this happens, when you have done me doing your music, when you have every star of any note on that floor, is there a sense of power? Is there a sense of <laughs> this is a show of strength? I am the sort of unbounded. What a great question. <laughs> not at all. Come no. on, be honest. I mean, not at all. I mean, like, I'm. Just, I, I, can I truly be honest? And I yeah. swear, on yeah, yeah. Life, it's a lot of gratitude, mm -hmm. and also things I may have done right. I'm like, that's awesome. I've obviously, built these relationships, of course. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, I'm really proud that my upbringing made me do that. Mm -hmm. Like, it made me understand that I don't need to be more friends with you only if I'm working with you. Yeah. Simple concept, which nobody in this industry really follows. Yeah. I'm in touch with all actors. Whether I'm in working with them or not, there's a connection. You make a connection, you have to further that with a communication mm -hmm. and further that with really some emotion. 
Abhi Tumai, how can you invest with somebody, work so closely with them, and go sep your separate ways right after the film is over? But that's the nature of the business. That that's is what the nature does. of the business. But I don't do that. Mm. I don't do that. It's not something. It's not in my DNA. So what I what was happening in front of me was a lot of celebration, and for me, a lot of gratitude that I've done what my father would have liked me to be. I, I, mm. I'm I'm trying to be the person that he would like his son to have been. Is in touch with the fraternity, close enough, and of course there are people who don't like me, and there are people I don't like. Sure, uh, I'm human, and I'm no way I'm not some saintly person who's loving everybody. There are people I can't stand, and there are people who can't stand me, and that that is going to happen. Mm -hmm. But more or less, I've tried my level best to kind of live up to the relationships that that actually began on a certain emotional note, and then I didn't want to let go. So if I worked with somebody in 1998, they're still in my life today. You know, uh, there are relationships. You, I'm not. I haven't. It's not that Shahrukh and I work together as actor and years. director since 12 years. Yeah. Who is the closest to me in this business? He is. His mm -hmm. family is my family. So it's like I don't think it's about the work. Mm -hmm. It's about how you can nurture those relationships. And I believe I've done that. That to me is not power. It's a victory. It's yeah. an emotional victory. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. Speaking of Shahrukh, uh, Karan, you and Abi were really sort of key architects of the sort of Shahrukh Khan phenomenon. Yeah. And you, more than I think most filmmakers, have had a really sort of front row seat to stardom and the evolution of stardom in Hindi cinema. How much has it changed? What, stardom? Yeah. There's no stardom. Abhi nahi hai. Kaan hai. Really? There is some, uh, there may be, there is uh, uh, popularity. <coughs> What's there? the difference? There's a big difference. Tell the me. The magnetism, the mystery, mystique, aura. I don't think this generation has it. I think they are wonderful artists, but do they have that magic and mystery that I grew up when I grew up? And I, I was at a party and Mr. Bachchan walked in, Mr. Dilip Kumar walked in, Mr. Shah Rukh Khan walked in. It was like heads turning. I've seen it. Yeah. Aura, like everybody, like literally is feeling the presence of that was power. Yeah. That was stardom. Yeah. That was glory. Hmm. Today, everybody is much easier. It's also the generation that is easier. More casual, more accessible, more yeah. available. Mm -hmm. On a daily basis, I'm swiping you on my Instagram. I'm like liking, disliking you. I know which gym you go to. I know which Pilates class you go to. I know what you eat. I know who you meet. I know what you do. I know everything about you. How can there be any mystery attached? Mm. Is, so when Shah Rukh Khan interesting. even walked into my party, you could feel there was a thumping energy. That's an interesting energy. take. It's like you know that Shah Rukh Khan is Shah Rukh Khan because there is that aura. I mean. That that kingdom that he has, and that feeling of that kingliness that he got, yeah. it's true. It's true. If he walked in right now, you would feel his energy, and even if you didn't see him, correct. That doesn't happen with this generation. It's, it's that not, Jaya Bachchan from K3G. You right? You can just sense Shah Rukh. Of <laughs> course, just sense like, if I'm telling you, everyone felt it. So Shah Rukh was the only one who didn't walk the red carpet. He mm. came from the other side. So, but when he walked in and he was in the party, I could see whether it was a younger movie. It was as young as maybe Ananya Pandey, right up to his peers. Everybody felt the aura. That is stardom. Yeah. What are you telling me about a feeling of it's all, it's nothing? So is that over? Are we done with I, that? I, I don't think there's going to be that kind of stardom anymore. I'm not saying it's a wrong or a right thing. Sure. I'm like, it doesn't exist. Yeah. I'm not saying that that's something that I'm going to miss or the world will miss. Maybe the concept of stardom is just going to be this mm -hmm. because we're in a world of active social media and there is not going to be such a thing mm -hmm. as manic stardom because you know we're, everyone as I said is so accessible it's the way it is but I don't think it's going to ever be like it was hmm. really yeah I don't think we have it like when I meet a movie star like even when I when I meet Rekha Ji at an event mm -hmm. I feel like there is something like time just stops around her and you feel like you know you're, you're meeting even she will be wearing her beautiful sari with Correct. her gorgeous children and you'll be like movie star like, you know, lights, arc lights, yes. like, 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 big silver screen magic, like, it'll yeah. all come back, memories, nostalgia. Yeah. Do I feel like when I meet anyone from this generation? No, and I love them. Okay. Like, I think some of the finest actors we have mm -hmm. are in this generation today, brilliant artists. But that magic and aura, I don't know. Hmm. I'm not mm -hmm. sure about that. Karan, your cinema like that. is by design um, accessible. Yeah. It's crowd-pleasing. Um, it's... You want it to appeal to a wide audience, right? But through this, you've also slipped in subversive ideas. You know, you did bring gay characters into the mainstream. You talked about infidelity. You talked about the female orgasm with 
which i might have or might not have it's it's a separate issue i'm not taken seriously as a filmmaker and that's really the truth of it i can i can defend myself i can argue it i can speak from my heart about what i feel about my work but the truth is i'm not taken seriously by a certain section and now i've learned to live with it it's fine it's what i am if i when i i feel there's a grudging approach to even praising me when i do something different i'm like it's like mar mar ke tareef likhegi mar mar ke you know they will be like they will be like you know like maybe this just happened it's not really him <laughs> or they'll be like if this is him then what what is he doing in the rest of the work he creates i don't know if i'm good or bad anymore it's just like i want to do what makes me happy when i told love stories it was a story that i wanted to tell it was a script that came to me from a very bright writer and i was like completely and when i thought of the idea of playing the track of kabhi khushi kabhi gham over the orgasm uh, i was like it's great it's yeah. not that i'm feeling like i, I feel like there's a, there uh, there's a subversive kind of like way of kind of like making fun of your own self which is self deprecating and, and and gorgeous i think yeah. um rightfully even when i did bombay talkies and talked about repressed sexuality in a marriage i would i talked about infidelity you know in a film i, I mean even my film like my name is khan which i i tried attempt about you know about the social fabric uh, and uh, where we live and how we operate i don't think i got enough credit for doing any of that i'm still asked you're great red carpets and events about oh you make these beautiful grand lovely films i'm like i've also made other stuff but like i don't think i will ever get a knowledge for that and i've learned to be okay with it i'm not saying that i'm bitter about it anymore there was a phase that i was like yeah i really want critical acceptance because i feel like i'm also beyond what people see like mm. i feel there is a part of me as a filmmaker i agree I'm not getting enough credit for i agree and that used to bother me at one point honestly it doesn't bother me anymore like i don't seek that validation and maybe it's like a load off my chest and you might see it in rocky rani it's like a load off my chest film it's really going back to the basics with of course the syntax of today mm. but it's really celebrating everything i grew up watching and i don't care anymore when i made my name is khan i wanted to win an award mm. when i when i made last stories i wanted and uh, bombay talkies i wanted to be part of a group of very celebrated critically acclaimed filmmakers and i wanted to belong i had all these feelings it came from insecurities i don't have them anymore today fortunately but can you also said yourself that i haven't made that sort of ground breaking film yeah. right that i haven't made the dil chahta hai or the lagan it's just no. not there in my filmography so Why do you think that is? Have you been too timid as a storyteller? No, I've been a producer, also. I also run a studio, and I tend. So you mean when you're directing, you're thinking too much like a producer? Yes, I am. Mm. Because it becomes a tentpole film for the company. I haven't mm. yet been able to detach myself from my the studio that I run, mm. like where oh I'll just do this and no one will care. I'm like no, my film is a tentpole film. Then there's an expectation of needs. <clears throat> and recoveries and the business that this film needs to do there yeah. is that thinking it needs to be I liberated from that that commerce with the art and that's what I, i i feel like that's where sometimes perhaps the ability to creatively breathe doesn't happen because there is also a balancing act oh there has to be music because i'm getting that much for music oh the film has to be wider it has to work in, in the diaspora as well it has to work everywhere so how do i plan that experience because i'm going to spend this much i need to recover this much there's a mathematic that happens along with it so it's easy for people to turn around and say but you can do what you want to but i don't want to i want my film to be the tentpole film for my company and my studio but and but that you're work. limiting yourself i don't is limiting i also enjoy the what i do so mm-hmm. it's not like i'm dying to kind of tell a story which i haven't been able to mm-hmm. maybe in li- and now there's also dharmatic entertainment that allows me to breathe digitally and maybe i will you know tell a different story i keep saying that you know i want to i do a show like this and i haven't been able to get down to doing it but a lot of my thinking for when i've created content has also my thinking honestly and i want to say this it's not something that um that i'm hiding as well there is definitely a producer hat that that also comes in play and that you use the word limiting but i i i use the word catering i'm catering to my to my company and what i need to do for it and never done anything i haven't enjoyed 
Like I've enjoyed making Kabhi Khushi Kabhi Kyam as much as I did the short in Bombay Tokies. I've had great fun on both sets. It's because I'm telling a story in the way. But when I do make a big theatrical experience, I, ha I do think of various other factors. And I'd be lying if I said I don't. Mm. Hmm. Tell me, um, there's been so much hand-wringing in the last couple of months about the South and the rise of the South and, yeah. and what's wrong with Hindi cinema, right? Now, a hypothesis I have is that one of the things that is hobbling Hindi cinema is also the sort of industrial strength vanity. Yeah. that is a part of this business. Vanity is a part of showbiz everywhere. But I think in this ecosystem, with the paid news, with the sort of projection constantly on social media, with the sort of head turning salaries for stars, uh, it seems to have kind of gone into another yes. level. And that has finally become a big hurdle to get past because mm. everyone's pitching themselves as a brand rather than an artist. Would you agree with this hypothesis? Uh, partially, I think that, you know, the, that we're victims of, of the very things that we should run away from is like this, all this, whether it's like paid PR, it's media blades, it's projections, perceptions, all of that, I agree with, with that, that, that is plaguing us yeah. in, in various ways. But also, I think we don't have the conviction. There's a, we're victims of herd mentality. It's like suddenly, I think... What happened in Telugu cinema, you know, predominantly if you go by now, uh, Kannada cinema has given us this massive hit with KGF. Um, Telugu cinema and now with KGF, um, Tamil cinema and, and Malayalam have always been story heavy, content heavy. It's a, they've always told stories. They've been, you know, they've also been commercial. They've also been aesthetic. Yeah. A lot of that has, has happened. Telugu has been hugely mainstream, a big audience. And now KGF has broken all records yeah. with the first Kannada global film, like, you know, which has been made. What I think is common and I've worked with all that. So it's strange, but I've been at the launch of Bahubali 1, Bahubali 2, at the launch of RRR, at the launch of KGF. I've been at all these launch events and 2.0. Uh, the big theatrical, I've been at all the launch. I've in fact hosted every one of these and I'm very proud about that fact because I've been in touch with filmmakers from the South, actors from the South for a very long time. I think, I think I'm happy to report that I saw this this creative, mad, crazy blitz and energy much before anybody else in my industry did. And yeah. that I would like to say yeah. that that is true. And I'm, I'm, and I'm happy about that. I'm proud of it as well. I saw it. Not because I'm proud that I had anything to do with that genius that they created. I had nothing to do with Bahubali. But you were there. Uh, I, well, I was there. I was right. part of the party. Yeah. I was part of the party. But I think what I feel is common is they have a lot of conviction. Mm -hmm. And they don't listen to other things. They just follow their conviction. Mm -hmm. They know what they're doing. They do it. They're not seeking acceptance, validation, approval, wanting to create. They are so confident in their skin. They are so convinced with what they're doing. And I think that's what we all lack. In our cinema, we don't have conviction. Suddenly, if biopics are doing well, then everybody will make a biopic. Suddenly, now everyone's woken up to the syntax of, 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 of the Southern cinema. And now we want to suddenly start doing that. We are, it's, what, what were we? We made certain movies with certain amount of love and conviction that the 70s saw, the 80s saw. I'm talking about in recent memory, the 90s, even when we did love stories with Abandon. We stopped all of that because suddenly 2001, Lagan and Vilchata came and we were like, we want to also be walking uh, uh, and be nominated at the Academy Award. That was true to those films. Those were great films. You will not perhaps be able to do it again, so why should you try? In fact, that's what I respect about a filmmaker like Sanjay Leela Bansali. I'm like, he sticks to what he loves yeah. and he is never, and when he did deviate, which he had, those didn't work out for him. Yeah. But whenever he stuck to what he's passionate about, he's never gone wrong. And I love that about him, as I do about any filmmaker who stuck their ground. Mm -hmm. But a lot of filmmakers, and I have to say, including myself, we get carried away. We get carried away with where the wind is blowing. And I've done it myself. Like at one point in time, suddenly when I saw these movies doing well, and I was like, I need to make a... Which ones? Uh, my name is Khan, when I made okay. it, oh. I was like, I want to win an award. I want critical acceptance. I want four stars on my review. Like this is what's going to matter. It's not about the business. It's about the, the aesthetic and it's about the critical acceptance. I've done that myself. Suddenly when I, when I was in neither here nor there situation after that film, I was like, let me go back and make student of the year. Like, it was like it's crazy. <laughs> I've done all kinds of things in my head. I feel like what they have is conviction and what we lack is exactly that. Mm -hmm. And I feel all the rest that you're talking about are peripheral problems. Mm -hmm. Our main thing is we don't have conviction. So, what do you say? 
it will have to happen. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise we're screwed. I mean, like, look what's happening. I mean, like, we need to up our storytelling. We need to empower mm. writers. We need to go back to basics. Mm. Basic love for cinema, conviction of Indian cinema. We need to stop trying to be somebody else. You know, we need to stop appealing to who we can't appeal to. If you are Anurag Kashyap, you know this is your strength, you will do that. If you are SS Rajamal, you know what you need to do. You need to know what you're capable of. You don't want to become a buffet when you are a bona fide a la carte. You know? <laughs> Why, do you do Why you don't have and you have to go back to good old fashioned conviction. That's all I tell any filmmaker. Actor included. I feel actors are like meandering, doing whatever, wherever the wind is blowing, they're trying to go with it. Oh, action is working now. We all want to do action films, including me who wants to direct one. So I'm like, we're all so, so idiotically unconvinced about our strengths and weaknesses right. that we just tend to be all over the place. Yeah. And I think that's when I meet uh, S.S. Rajamoli, when I meet Shankar sir, and I meet, when I, when I, when I, I met uh, Prashant Neel, who's directed KGF, and I meet the producers, they just know what they are doing. Mm -hmm. And they don't care what anybody else has to say. And then I feel when I read the reviews of KGF, and I'm like, if we made this film, we would be lynched. But here, everybody's <laughs> like, oh, it was a celebration, a party, and, and, and it was, I loved it. I loved it with all my heart. But I'm like, Hum ye banate to hat. so I'm like, it's also working both ways. I feel we are also not given any kind of leeway. And mm. also we are then trying to be somebody else. So we're all over the place. So we're living a dual existence and we have to stop. Do you have any regrets, Karan? Is there anything you wish you had done differently? I wish I'd focused on my personal life a little more. I don't think I have done that. I mean, as a parent, I feel very fulfilled today. And thank God I took that step. And I think I took that step five years too late. I wish I had done that even earlier. Mm. But I feel like in all this relationship building, producer building, studio building, I let myself and my personal life mm. take a back seat. Um, as I did, like I, like I talked about it professionally as a director, but I think the bigger regret I have is that I didn't, I didn't give that part of my life um, the importance that I think that it deserved at a certain point of time. And now I think it might be too late. No. I mean, that's you saying that with empathy, but I'm saying that with reality. And like, I think it's perhaps too late for me to now find a life partner and, you know, go to the mountains for a Is it too late, Rick? With, uh, or kind of have someone... You planning to be dead in the next oh, year? Also make <laughs> Even then, it's not too late. Knowing my luck, yeah. Somebody will pop out of that mountain and like have an image uh, to kind of, kind of like, you know, kind of like haunt me with. But... Uh, You're older than him, right? That life part... I'm 53. That someone to hold your hand at times of trials and tribulations. You know, because I think that what I think a life partner does for you, like a partner in, in love and in, like, you know, you're in a marriage, you know what I mean, you have kids um, and you're a unit. Like, I think a parent, a child can never fulfill that aspect. Mm -hmm. That I think that is reserved for your soulmate, your life partner, your relationship of romance, whatever it might be. Uh, I don't have that. That's a vacant spot in my life and that's my deepest regret. Hopefully temporarily. Well, you never know. You uh, never know. Never You're only 50. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. I if you want one. Talk, you said to me that I tell everyone my age that you have to work towards being relevant. And you said that's your biggest fear, is that you won't be relevant. Yeah. So, are you afraid of a time when people won't talk about you? Yes. Really? Mm. That was a quick answer. Right, right. Why? He knows. I don't know. I don't like indifference. I'm okay with hate. Um, I'm okay with, of course, I'm okay with love. I'm not okay with indifference. Mm. I don't, I don't mind that, that, that you are absolutely trolling or hating me. But if you're not talking about me, it's going to bother me. I know Interesting. Me. I don't have any other answer to give you. It's going to bother me. Relevance is an indifference. Uh, so relevance in work. So I have to kind of move with the times and kind of understand the climate and the, you know. I was thinking as a producer again. Of our times also to Even if you hate them, you're, you're talking about At least you're talking. It. The bad part. Yeah. All, <laughs> sensible, all, all press is good press. Yeah. My mentality. Stay connected with the stories of your times, the music of your times, the people, the syntax, everything. That's one thing. Personally also, I want to also be talked about for whatever I do. Like, if I'm throwing this party and you're not going to ask me this question, I'm like, why did I throw it? I like, of course, <laughs> want to be like talked about. I don't want your indifference. I don't mind about, as I said, I don't mind your extreme reaction to me. 
that's the one thing that I don't know how I'll deal with. Um, uh, I've spent 28 years being talked about and I would like to spend, I mean, I feel if I can manage that to really push it to as much as I can, uh, I'd be very grateful. Uh, that's all I can say because I don't want people to not talk about me. That would be heartbreaking. This is in the right because industry you, for you know, yeah. at the 90th. Oh yes. Oh, oh completely. Pink. No less. <laughs> okay, Karen, last question. You know, I first interviewed you in 2001. Oh God. Just before K3G released. Okay. Okay. I came to your office and for that same I did this piece for India Today magazine. Yeah. And for the same piece I interviewed your mom. Um, and she said to me that, you know, he was such an introvert, such a fallu ke piche child, yeah, that's yeah. the descriptor yeah. she used, that I couldn't believe he was going to direct a film. Yeah. So, Karan, all these years later, is that introvert, is that fallu ke piche person somewhere in there or have you changed completely? No, you know, so no one believes it and I'm going to say this with a straight face and I don't know if you're going to buy it and I don't know if anyone's going to buy it and frankly now what can I do about it? I still am really slightly shy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I I'm so know. sorry for laughing in your face. That's what I said. It's like I saying Ranveer really has no I energy. Anyone I speak to. I said, even now, when I walk into a party, I'll go alone because I've learned to do that. Because I'm like, I don't want any you know, people around me for any kind of security. But I'm awkward till I put on that role. So what I can do, because I'm Gemini, and you get two for the price of one. <laughs> That's a great shirt. Still. I'm a Gemini. You, know, you get two for the this, price of one. It's true to me. But that one part is a complete... I think my act. twins are Geminis. I put up a show. I think... I would put up a show and you will never know. You're right. Acting. You but got two for the price of one. Of me might be that so does that mean they're four? So yep. <laughs> You've got the first time, five kids. They will initially be my, my, my will to please you. So I will put up that show. But part of me might be like, actually, I don't know what I'm doing here. Like, I'm a little like awkward about it. So that... Paluke Piche child and that shy kid is somewhere still around in the vicinity, but there's a lot of performance that has come on top of it now. Uh, so who am I really happens when I go home and I say goodnight to my mom and I know my kids are asleep and I go into my room and I get into my shorts and I wear my t-shirt and go to my kambal and I watch and I reply to myself having my thoughts, sometimes staring in the ceiling, sometimes watching content, sometimes reading. That is who I really am. Those four hours that I give myself in literally the solitude of my room, because I don't have a partner, I'm not in a relationship, a lot of that solo time is where I become that, that kid that I was. Hmm. That, and, that and, person. And, that, and I enjoy my own company a lot more now than I used to, because it used to make me deeply insecure earlier, because I felt like I needed to be everywhere. Now with age, I'm like, I'm really happy when I can spend those four hours with myself. And many a time I've done that, and I've enjoyed every bit of the silence in my room because there is so much noise around me otherwise. Yeah, there is, there is. And that noise, Karan, is only going to get louder since you are shooting season seven of Coffee Yay. with Karan. Yay! Story of the pot again. Well, uh, can I tell you what I'm saying uh, in my campaign? I'm saying, screw it, I'm still going to brew it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Tell me, Karan. <laughs> I know you said that you have no sense of power when, when all of these people are there yeah, at your birthday, yeah. right? Is there a little bit, teeny weeny sense of power when all of them are on your couch saying things they probably shouldn't be? But that's changing, Anu. They're all so guarded. I'm shooting my second season. I have to like yank it out now. Like, I'm, like, it's, it's <laughs> no one's messing up? <laughs> no, everyone's so like, will you ask me about this? Will you don't ask me about this? Don't say this. Can you cut that out? I'm like, I'm like, what's going on? Like, what happened to candor? What happened to good old fashioned, like casual repartee and an interview? In Coffee with Karan, for that matter, when I was watching, you know, we were making a mashup of all the seasons and I was watching it. Like, I've literally seen myself age on those yeah. seasons because it's like, I remember you messaging me when uh, we put out a little bit of like that gimmick saying that Coffee with Karan is I not was so returning. Sad. Not I was returning. so sad. And I was like, I, so, were we? So much we bought it. On that couch like it was so is now everyone is so worried because like suddenly they know that everything will become a headline it'll be sensationalized i've got cricketers into trouble for crying out loud i have nothing to do with cricket and i managed even that so people can be really scared so i'm finding like everybody like you know there are people like ranveer kapoor has told me i'm not coming on your show he's like yeah you have to pay the price for it for too long why should i do this to myself <laughs> he said i love you i'll meet you in your house and talk to you you give me coffee at home I'm not <laughs> 
I've also had that, you know, happens, and I'm like, and I laughed out loudly because he said, he said, please, मुझे show पे मत बुलाओ. He said मुझे नहीं आना. He said बहुत tension होती है. Like Ranveer was like. When he saw, he said, "Can I show me the edit? You know, because you, you can build public perception on the basis of that performance on that couch." And I'm like, "Why are you taking it so seriously?" <laughs> <laughs> it's just a silly, frivolous talk show. Right. I mean, let's not give it anything else. I mean, I know others have said it themselves. They call it that. It is that only that I'm not breaking any boundaries with that show. Not talking about anything intensely cerebral. We're having just. Topish conversation, and that's why everyone's guilty pleasure because people like to watch it's cringe. Yeah, it's it's what you call the quintessential cringe binge. You still binge. <laughs> well, I can't wait to see it, Karan. Thank you. I look forward to showing it to you on the seventh of July. <laughs> Good plug. Yeah. Nicely yeah. done. Yes. Nicely done. Yes. Nicely done. Karan, thank you so much. Thanks, and Amin. and. Uh, you know, happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> what did we just end? Like, we just want nothing. <laughs> just absolutely nothing. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so good. Uh, he is... Much smarter than people give him credit. Well, for. Oh yeah, known that for I, on all a aspects. While. Yep, absolutely. In terms, of, even though he says in here he doesn't get any credit as a filmmaker, just because he doesn't make like Anyarad Kashyap all the time kind of films doesn't make, mean he's not worthy of a filmmaker. Correct. If you listen to him talk about filmmaking, not from the producer side of things, but from the storytelling side of things and the acting and the directing side of things, his his cinematic intelligence is really high. Really high. And you could tell in the same way that, you know, since Anurag is our dost, maybe Kiarana will be our future dost, um, that he loves cinema. You could tell he loves Hindi cinema specifically. Yeah. yeah. He'd like, this is what he grew up just absolutely adoring. And it, it shows in his work. Yeah. That, and uh, it's going to show in the work he's going to do because he's at a place right now, if he holds true to that, and I don't see why he wouldn't, that the films he makes over the next 10 years of his life he's not going to be making them for any other reason than just this is what I want to make. It would be really interesting to if see. He, the, his only problem is going to be the producer hat. That's going to be his problem. Yeah. Is can I st- tell the stories and direct the films I want to tell without thinking about the fact that this has to be a tent pole and I have to do this with my budget? He, if he could, that's going to be a challenge. Yeah. But other I, than that... I don't know if he's going to be able to get out of that. The only way he can place. would be if someone like his friend SRK said... Just let Red Chilies do it and let me worry about that side of it and you just direct. Mm. But yeah, I don't know that he wants to lose that producer yeah, I control. He, I, I don't think so. I think he's he likes the control. Which yeah. Obviously, he's a director and a producer. so it, it, And he wants to know what the money is happening to it. I don't think he can separate I, himself. I don't think he can. But no. You could tell he's, he, he's quite intelligent. Yes, he and is. He know, he's quite self-aware as well. Very. He knows. And articulate. He knows his perception. Uh, around India um, about him as a filmmaker, him as a person. I think it's quite hilarious. He's like his biggest fear is just just continue to talk about me, <laughs> which is absolutely hilarious. But something that I I, I bet you over seventy five percent of people in the entertainment industry feel that exact same. Yeah, because if you're not talking about them, your your job is unfortunately over really Mm -hmm. yeah because it's a business no because that means you become irrelevant and if you're irrelevant then why would someone work with you yeah and it might sound like weird but obviously for somebody who's been in the industry for 30 years this is their entire life yes that's probably their biggest fear as opposed to somebody who's not in the industry be like oh he's so conceited (laughs) you just want people to talk this is his life, man, mm-hmm. and this is this is he's married, and I think that's probably why he doesn't have a partner. Doesn't think he'll have a partner. He's married to his work, yeah, producing, directing, and he enjoys it. What it's lovely you. that he's got a piece about that. I loved him saying that he's gotten to the place where he can enjoy the silence and be, you know, and be with himself. Mm-hmm. And because of that, he's probably do not be surprised if you hear he's found a partner very soon, because <laughs> typically you find your partner when you're not looking for your partner, because mm-hmm. it just as natural and you you get that person for the right reason it'll be really interesting to see his next work and, and I'm how, excited 
obviously we know what style of film it's going to be. He's he's wanting to honor old school Indian cinema, so it's probably going to be big, over the top, Kieran Johar yeah. films, which is its own genre and it's wonderful. Yeah, um, to see Alia and and Ren Beer, it's be great. The closest in terms of us that we've seen in that role of Ren Beer is probably Ram Leela. Yeah, it's probably the closest. The closest we've one. To. And then I think he'll also because he's got films like My Name Is Khan in in his in his heart. And he'll make it because he wants to. It won't be done because he wants people to consider him to be. He's he's at peace with who he is and who he's perceived to be. And he doesn't feel like he needs to prove anything, which is the best place for him to be. Because now he'll just make the movies. And that's the encouragement. Just make what you want to make. And just enjoy making what you want to make. And who cares what anybody else thinks about it's it. really insightful. Review, I, I really like him. It's a it's a really insightful review. Of yep. What he said about he's like if if they made KGF they would be bashed. <laughs> and he, he's true. He's right though. Not no, I'm talking about KGF, but I'm more talking about how Bollywood does not have a leash, right at all. Yeah, it's um, it if it's bad, it's going to be bad, and nobody's going to support it, and right. they don't get any leeway for any kind of mess ups. Yeah, as opposed to the other industries. Their fans are always going to be there, and they're going to be rooting for it. And they don't really have a people in their industry that are as critical of them as fans of Bollywood are. True, but Bollywood there are artists, criti- critical people, and uh, Hindi fans that are critical of Bollywood and yeah. every other industry. Yeah, that's true. But there are artists who have proven by their work that they don't care about what you think about what they're creating. Yeah, Zoya, Anurag, Farhan, which is. The p- two of those are the people you worked with on Lust Stories, and and um, yeah, we talked to Anurag. Anurag, he said he's the he actually specifically mentioned Kieran Johar. He's like the nicest. If you ever need anything, if you need anybody. You if to, you need you a go friend, Kieran Johar. Yeah, that he's he is genuine with his relationships. Um, uh, I can, yeah, he, I feel like what you see is what you get with him. Yeah, I feel yep. like a lot of people don't like that. No, a lot of people are are intimidated by that. They don't have. The, they themselves don't have the strength of character to be around somebody who can look you in the eye and they know who they are mm-hmm. and they can see right through you because mm-hmm. you're not sure who you are mm-hmm. and it becomes very intimidating. Also, I want to shout out to uh, her because yes, yeah, she's, she's great a, interviewer. She's a great interviewer. Really is. Um, uh, Surprise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Been doing it a long time. Um, she, I feel like she. But she that was she, a great question. Like the be honest, mm-hmm. be honest. Does it not give you a power boner? To look around the room, and did wasn't there a part of you that was like, I'm going to do this party so that everybody can see me flex my celebrity muscles? And he said, no, actually. And I, I believe him. I think he was honest. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, who knows, man? I thought it was a great interview. 42 minutes, so real fast yep. uh, there. So let us know uh, what other uh, interviews we can watch and what should be the next Kieran Johar film. And if you know Kieran Johar. We we won't. We'll do a forty minute interview. I mean, if you want us to talk about your party, I guess we can. But no, that's we're going to talk about your films. It's mostly not what we're going to we talk about, about the though. Party. So uh, wait a minute, unless we're invited and you pay us, and when you've got coke. <laughs>